Hey Chris, uh, it's nice to see you again after so long. <laughs> yeah. uh, can you tell us about uh, what uh, the British uh, has has been doing uh, in the past 2018, and then what do we expect to happen in 2019? Sure. Like first of all, it's great to see you again as well. Uh, it's always nice to see uh, old friends yeah. uh, and current <laughs> friends. So like, 2018 has been a very successful year for the chamber. Uh, I probably emphasise a couple of areas. Number one. Uh, we did a trade uh, mission in March to Iloilo, largest ever, 150 attendees. We've been on two uh, road shows to the UK. We supported the visit of the Philippine economic team, uh, which was in September. And we've had future success of getting companies to come here and establish business. So it's been a very comprehensive and successful 2018. Now for 2019, uh, what we're looking to do is build on the momentum. So in the first quarter, we intend to do a trade mission to Clark. Therefore, we'll have done three trade missions, the Vau, Iloilo, Clark. So we're supporting the 10-point economic plan. We'll have further road shows to the UK. And we intend to keep working closely with the administration on activities such as, obviously, uh, the repeal, which is going on, and of course on the ease of doing business. So in summary, 2018 was very successful, but we need to keep pushing hard to maintain the momentum and to keep driving interest of the Philippines to UK companies. Yeah. Do you see some investors coming in? Uh, what are the focus of the Chamber in helping the Philippines in bringing in investors from the UK? I think our focus is uh, to really promote on the opportunities here. Uh, I think I cannot stress enough that's one of the key areas, right? Uh, for example, that your growth rate has been impressive over 6%, that there is a clear need as stated by the government in terms of infrastructure building, that the growth rate could be even more impressive with those, uh, obviously those projects completed. And I think that let's not also forget that the Philippines is 105 million people. It's very young, it's dynamic, uh, English speaking, and that presents great opportunities for British brands, uh, both in the retail sector, food and beverage. So those are what we're trying to do to highlight to people because as I stressed, uh, we've constantly got to remind people of the great opportunities here. Yeah. If there are three things that you see in the Filipinos, what are those three good things that you've been you've been, you've been living here for, for so long already? Yeah. Well, the first, of course, is the fact I'm married to one for 30 years, so <laughs> <laughs> please put that on camera and then send it to her, right? Uh, so that's the first thing. Look, I think the Filipinos are very easy in terms, there is no barriers between people, right? I mean, I've worked in other countries and here I think uh, foreigners are, not, are accepted very easily, we can do business very easily. Secondly, I would also say that your government officials in that respect are also very accessible. Uh, I mean, we work with Secretary Lopez, uh, Secretary Drogna, we met Secretary Dominguez. And in Maine, I think, you know, the access that they present and their willingness to engage with people, right? And then I think overall, I think one of the key is that you have a very wide talent pool. Um, Filipinos are well educated, um, very good obviously in certain technical sides. And I think that's obviously been proven by the fact your BPOs are so successful. Mm. And I think that also gives opportunities for people when they come here to hire. So I think that would. But number one is my wife, of course, so please stress <laughs> that part. <laughs> yeah, uh, forecast uh, for Philippines uh, in terms of economy from your side as the chairman of the chamber. Look, I think uh, the, the, the economy should continue to do well. I mean, one should always talk about certain challenges because it's never going to be a straightforward. I think, first of all, that inflation obviously has been a challenge for them or a concern. Obviously, it's come down somewhat, uh, but you've got to see that mitigates because obviously that's also leads to higher interest rates. But the growth rate is still at 6%. Uh, I'd also say that it's important to push ahead with these infrastructure projects uh, because I think that would, while the, Im the, the impact may not be immediate in some cases, I think the long-term benefit yeah. would stand the country in great stead. 
In terms of legislation, uh, I mean, as I discussed during the briefing, like other chambers, we do have concerns with regard to what was Train 2, which I think has now been renamed Trabajo, in relation to the fiscal incentives, particularly for companies operating the Peza Zone. And the Peza Zone has been a great success to the Philippines, and we, we have to look how that works. And as I've constantly stressed, I think that's a very valid point. So. Hopefully those will be taken into consideration so they can come with a, a, a middle ground, right? Yeah. But, and the other thing I'd say actually is, they look, I think, you know, the Philippines has really developed well over a number of years, right? Uh, and the key is to keep on emphasizing that to the UK, the fact that this is a country which has grown so strongly that you have a very, very attractive consumer market that there are good needs in infrastructure. British companies have been involved, for example, in the building of the Cebu airport that was Arab. Uh, and I think that can continue. I mean, I'm very optimistic. I mean, and you just have to assume that on the way there will always be some issues. I mean, inflation was now. But as long as we stay focused on the main point, the final thing I'd just like to say as well is I think that, you know, the Chamber works very closely with the British Embassy, with the British Ambassador, and I think the UK's awareness in the Philippines has, has developed significantly over the last years. It's, uh, I think we live in very interesting and exciting times for the country. I've been here 15 years. Uh, I'll always be optimistic. I think there are great opportunities, but great opportunities means we have to work even harder to realize those opportunities. So on that base, I'd like to wish everybody a very Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And I think it'll be a great 2019 for the Philippines and the UK. Thanks. Thanks.